Let's do another example. Here we have this disk, which is rotating with angular velocity of omega and angular acceleration of alpha. And there is a pin on this disk. And this part is connected to the disk through that pin. So the pin can go up and down in this slot, okay? If you look at the mechanism, a little bit more carefully. So when the disc rotates, this shaft is gonna move right and left because of that pin. Now the question is, if we know what is this omega and alpha and theta, what's gonna be the velocity and acceleration of this point of this shaft, P? So again, we need to find a relationship between the position of P and also this theta. If I find a mathematical relationship between them, a geometric relationship between them, and write, write it down as, um, as a mathematical equation, I can take a derivative of that to find the relationship between theta dot and velocity of P. And theta dot means omega. If I take another derivative of it, I'm gonna be able to find the relationship between theta double dot or alpha and acceleration of P, right? So uh, think about this for a few minutes. Pause this video and do that, please. So I guess you did that, um, hopefully. Um, now let's work on it together. Uh, the problem is quite simple. The location of P from the center of the disk is equal to this distance plus constant d, right? And this distance is gonna be simply r times cosine of theta. So the location of um, p, if I call it, for example, x of p, x of p is gonna be r times cosine of theta plus d. Let me write that again here, a little bit bigger so we can see it better. The location of the point x of p is equal to r times cosine of theta plus constant d. Now, if I take a, um, if I take a derivative with respect to time from two sides of this equation, x dot of p, which means the velocity of p, right? x dot is equal to the velocity, is equal to um, derivative of r times cosine of theta plus derivative of d. So r is constant. When you are taking derivative of cosine of theta, be careful, uh, theta is a function of time too. So we need to take a derivative of theta first, then multiply to the derivative of cosine of theta. So it's gonna be r times theta dot times derivative of cosine is negative sine, right? So altogether, it's going to be negative r times theta dot times sine of theta. And d is a constant, so the derivative of it is equal to zero. And uh, another point is theta dot is omega, so you can replace it with omega too. So velocity of p is equal to negative r times omega times sine of theta. Uh, how can I find the acceleration of P? We can take another derivative of this. If I take a derivative of this again, with respect to time, derivative of velocity is gonna be acceleration. Acceleration of P is equal to. Now here we have theta dot and theta, both of them are changing with time. So when you are taking derivative, you need to do part by part. Derivative of theta dot is theta double dot, so I'm gonna have negative r theta double dot times sine of theta. Then we need to take a derivative of sine of theta, multiply to the rest of it. Derivative of sine of theta is gonna be theta dot times cosine of theta. And if you multiply to the rest of the equation, I'm gonna have negative r times theta dot is squared. One of them is here, the other theta that comes from the derivative of sine of theta times cosine of theta. 
And again, uh, you can replace uh, theta double dot with alpha and theta dot with omega. So acceleration of P is negative R times alpha times sine of theta minus R times omega squared cosine of theta.